let's understand asynchronous apex so asynchronous processing basics and asynchronous process executes a task in the background so we have basically two types of processes one is synchronous and one is asynchronous so whatever we understood till now those are synchronous processes like if you initiated that process so it will complete its execution at the same time but in some scenarios you want asynchronous processes like if particular resource is not available so when those resources are available then those processes starts their execution so those kind of processes are known as asynchronous process so user doesn't have to wait for the task to finish use asynchronous apex for call outs to ex external systems operations that require higher limits code that needs to run at a certain time so whenever you want to hit any external system through your code so those are basically known as call outs so that you can do with the help of asynchronous apex so uh, we have four different features available in asynchronous process that is future method queueable apex batch apex and we can also schedule apex that is known as schedulable apex so for callouts we can use them then operations that require higher limits so basically if you have initiated any synchronous process and from that synchronous process if you want to initiate any asynchronous process so asynchronous process basically runs in a separate thread and asynchronous and synchronous both will be having separate governor limits so if you are using asynchronous process so limits will be increased then if you want to run particular code at a particular time then you can also use a synchronous process so as i discussed earlier like uh, we have four types of asynchronous processing so all are listed over here so first one is future methods so future methods run in their own thread and do not start until resources are available common scenarios are web service call out next is batch apex so if you want to run large jobs that would exceed normal processing limits so in that case you can prefer batch apex common scenarios are data cleansing or archiving of records so if you want to perform these operations so you can create batch apex next we have queueable apex so queueable apex is basically similar to future methods but provide additional job chaining and allow more complex data types to be used so basically in future methods we can use primitives and collection of primitives but in queueable apex you can use non primitive data type as well as an argument so uh, like queueable is uh, advanced form of future method but still uh, in some scenarios you can use future methods in some scenarios you can use queueable apex so if i talk about common scenarios for queueable apex so if you want to perform sequential processing operations with external web services so in that case uh, you can call or you can create queueable apex then we have scheduled apex so basically schedule apex uh, uh, if you want to run your apex class at a specified time so in that case you can schedule uh, that particular class so basically if you have suppose you have created a batch apex and you want to schedule that so you can do that with the help of schedule apex so while writing apex class you need to implement uh, one interface and uh, after implementation of that interface you can uh, schedule that particular class and you can schedule your apex class on daily or weekly basis so common scenario is like if you want to perform any task daily or weekly basis so you can uh, schedule your apex 
So these are four types. Those are available under asynchronous processing. Now let's talk about governor and execution limits. So asynchronous Apex provides higher governor and execution limits. Number of SOQL is doubled from 100 to 200. Total heap size and maximum CPU time are similarly larger for asynchronous calls. As you get higher limits with async, also those governor limits are independent of the limits in the synchronous request that queued the async request initially. So this I already discussed like synchronous process, which is initiating asynchronous process. So both will be having uh, their separate governor limits. So this way in totality, uh, your limits will be increased. Now, there are some challenges uh, which are available in case of async process. So you need to ensure fairness of processing because uh, you cannot guarantee like when that process will be executing in case of future method or like uh, in that case, whenever resources are available, then they will be executed. And you need to ensure fault tolerance, like if they, they are not uh, like executing successfully, so how you will be uh, handling those uh, issues. So these are the challenges that you need to take care. Now, how a synchronous process works. So basically there are three steps. So initially a process will be enqueued. So uh, it will be available in a queue and whenever resources are available, then it will be executed. So after uh, like aligning that uh, process with the queue, then uh, second step is persistence. And uh, when all the operations will be done, then that process will be uh, removed from the queue. So that is third step, which is known as DQ, right? So this is all about asynchronous processing. In uh, upcoming uh, lesson, you will understand like how we can implement future method, batch apex, uh, queueable apex, and schedulable apex.